Hello, my name is Barrett Powell, PGY1 Pharmacy Resident at OSU Medical Center here in Tulsa. I'm here today to discuss some of the findings associated with my research project that deals with the prescribing patterns and the management of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Unfractionated heparin and low molecular weight heparins are among the most commonly used anticoagulants in a hospital setting, due most in part to their favorable pharmacokinetic profiles and relatively low cost. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, however, is a serious and potentially life-threatening adverse event that occurs when antibodies are formed against heparin platelet protein factor 4. The American Society of Hematology, or ASH, has published guidelines for the management of HIT in 2018. The ASH recommends utilizing the 4T score first to make a presumptive diagnosis of HIT, followed by lab studies. The serologic, for t serologic testing for HIT often takes days before results are available, which increases hospital costs with more expensive non-heparin alternatives. And the delay between suspected HIT and confirmation through lab testing may leave gaps in patient care. Anticoagulants used in this time frame are often more expensive and may expose patients to adverse drug reactions. Proper drug selection and dosing for patients with impaired organ function poses a challenge for healthcare providers. So the purpose of the study was to determine whether patients with presumed HIT are placed on proper anticoagulation in accordance with nationally approved guidelines for managing HIT. Specific aims include identifying the prescribing patterns for patients with a presumed HIT diagnosis, evaluating the indications, dosing, and duration of anticoagulants that were initiated in the setting of suspected HIT, assessing areas for quality improvement, utilizing the 2018 ASH guidelines that outline proper diagnosis and subsequent management of HIT. This is a retrospective chart review analysis that included any patient admitted to OSU Medical Center with a heparin-induced platelet antibody test or HIPAA panel ordered. Exclusion criteria included patients under the age of 18, pregnant patients, or patients with suspected or documented HIP prior to admission. The study window for collecting this data was any patient between November 1st of 2020 to May 31st of 2021. Some of the data collected includes patient gender, age, and weight, heparin exposure prior to a HIPAA panel being ordered, a 4T score if it was documented, or a rationale for suspected HIP, the anticoagulant that was used after a HIPAA order was placed, the subsequent HIPAA panel result, a documented allergy if patients were HIPAA panel positive, and the anticoagulant that was used um, after receiving a HIPAA panel result. Primary endpoint of the study was to assess the prescribing patterns of patients with suspected HIT after a HIPAA panel was ordered. This is broken down by the admitting team, the non-heparin anticoagulant that was used and its indication, whether or not a patient needed prophylactic versus treatment dosing, the HIPAA panel result, and the heparin product, and if a heparin product was resumed if your HIPAA panel was negative. Secondary endpoints included documentation of a heparin allergy if a HIPAA panel was positive. Here's some of the preliminary results. Um, we can see that the internal medicine team wrote for a little over half of the HIPAA panels that were um, ordered with that given year. Um, as far as anticoagulants chosen in the setting of suspected HIT, the two most common agents were argotraban and fondaparinux and a vast majority of the HIPAA panels that were ordered ended up being negative. About 68% of patients that had a HIPAA panel ordered um, was done after a 50% decline in your platelet count. Um, only 22% of these patients had a documented 4Ts score. 66% had an indication for treatment dose anticoagulation prior to the HIPAA panel being ordered. However, only 45% of those patients were placed on treatment doses of a non-heparin anticoagulant and only 42% of these patients resumed heparin if the HIPAA panel was negative. From this, we can kind of see that a large majority of the HIPAA panels ordered resulted as negative, 90% um, versus 10%. And the majority of these patients that had a HIPAA panel ordered had no documented 4T score, 22% versus 78%. Um, the majority of this is more largely driven by a 50% decline in platelet count for baseline. 66% of these patients had an indication for treatment dose anticoagulation. Um, which would include patients with a pulmonary embolism, deep venous thrombosis, or atrial fibrillation as examples. However, only 45% of these patients were actually placed on treatment doses of non-heparin anticoagulants. These include our gotraban continuous infusion and the weight-based fondaparinux at either 5 milligrams, 10 milligrams, or 15 milligrams daily based off of your body weight. For the patients with a negative HIPAA result, 42% uh, resumed heparin products for anticoagulation. 30% uh, remained on non-heparin anticoagulation for the remainder of their stay, and 28% were either discharged before knowing the result of the HIPAA panel or their HIPAA positive. The average time from a HIPAA panel being ordered to the time we got a result was about 4.3 days. 
and 100% of the patients that were HIPAA positive ended up with a documented heparin allergy. From this, we can see that a high percentage of patients with suspected HIT have a negative HIPAA result, suggesting that a more DeSalt approach, i.e. basing, of, basing suspicion off of declining platelet counts as opposed to utilizing the 4T score is utilized, and that there may be a potential gap in care for patients with indications for treatment dose anticoagulation that are subsequently only placed on prophylactic doses of non-heparin anticoagulants. From this, we can see there's a potential for collaborative practice between clinical pharmacists and physicians to ensure patients are placed on proper anticoagulation in the setting of suspected HIP. Some additional methods to help reduce prescribing errors may include providing a pharmacy consult service to help manage non-heparin anticoagulant doses. This concludes my presentation. Thank you.